All right, hello everyone. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com, um, where we uh, do uh, independent and third-party 2012 candidate interviews, um, where you get more information and uh, more options. Uh, and today we have uh, Ursula Rosen running in the 24th district of New York, um, and uh, as Green Party candidate, her only challengers are. Uh, a Republican and a, a Democrat, and um, we can briefly discuss them for a second, but we uh, would like to talk to Ursula. And uh, just to let you know, everyone, um, every two years something uh, uh, wonderful happens, and um, and I don't mean like an eclipse or anything like that, but every two years uh, uh, it was put into the Constitution that we can elect a new House of Representatives, and it's kind of an emergency break in case we need to make uh, swift changes and um, so that's what's happening this year November 6 2012 Ursula it's a pleasure to talk to you and and, and something else that um, always happens with these interviews is we started off with um, asking people what is their motivation um, what got them uh, you, you know to get on the ballots to be an option for the people to um, uh, to give people an instrument to be able to be heard and uh, uh, you know, stop um, voting Republican and Democrats, um, parties who take us for granted, don't want, uh, you know, other parties to be in the uh, debates and things like that. And good day to you. Thanks. Hi. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. Well, there's so many different motivating factors to run for office this year. Um, I've been involved in peace activism here in Syracuse, New York for the past four years. And one of the issues we've been working a lot on locally as well re in recent years is banning hydrofracking, uh, preventing it from coming to New York State. And so when I think about Election Day and I look at the choices in front of voters, well, looking at the choices in front of voters before I decide to enter the race, I thought to myself, there are so many different things that we organize and work for and fight for um, every day and none of these issues would even be discussed and none of them would be addressed by either of my opponents. Um, neither of them are willing to address U.S. imperialism and talk seriously about um, cutting the military budget, which is contributing to the deficit. And neither of them are willing to talk about the climate crisis and true energy independence, which would come through renewable energy sources. And I really felt like I, we wouldn't have a choice otherwise uh, on the ballot. And um, I'm 28, and I look at what's happening in our country and globally right now, and that if, we, if something doesn't change, uh, my, my generation and future generations won't have a future. We, we won't have any prospects of work. Um, we're already facing um, high levels of debt. And the climate crisis really is a threat to our future. So I felt that I, just had, to, I had to run this year. We need real choices. And I've been registered green since I've been 18. And before I even knew why, um, I registered to vote green because I knew Ralph Nader uh, wanted to legalize marijuana and he opposed war. And for me at 18, that was really important. And over the years, you know, I've learned all the different um, all the different ways green values translate into policy. So this year I'm the green candidate for the 24th district of New York. Excellent, excellent. And uh, yeah, I've, I, even from a young age, I never um, associated myself with the Republicans or the Democrats um, uh, at all. And um, well, it, and you're running against Anne Marie Burkle, um, Dan Maffey, and uh, Anne Marie is the uh, incumbent. Um, and uh, she also, um, well, I, I guess, you know, everyone can uh, say thank you to her as one of the people that voted for the um, uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Now, the act itself is just a spending bill, and it's there's one introduced every year. But what they do is add on, um, the, well, they added on indefinite detention. Uh, and so that's, um, is that one of your motivating reasons? Like, did, did that, do you feel that um, vote represented um, how you and the District uh, 25 people feel? Well, for me, it's definitely, I mean, for me, the NDAA represents the, the bipartisan consensus of um, trying to silence dissent and um, to, you know, increase, have more surveillance uh, in, in our country. So 
it's not necessarily the motivating factor for me, but it's just one of a long list of arguments of why we need independ independent representation. Right. And uh, now, um, it, so you, you did mention Ralph Nader uh, uh, legalizing marijuana, ending the wars, actually just ending the wars. Um, I mean, that itself, I mean, if that's part of the only thing that um, a lot of people could accomplish together, uh, w w I mean, just that by itself could uh, do a lot of things to change the world and the U.S. for the possibly for the better. Do you think so? Definitely. And I mean, when we talk, what I think what's really missing when we in the mainstream political debate when we talk about you know the federal budget and the deficit, the boogeyman that's this deficit and spending. People, not enough people um, in the mainstream are talking about defense spending and how it's increased so dramatically since 2000 and how neither party neither party is neither major party is willing to talk about um, cutting defense spending which is really you know the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are significant contributors to the deficit so and now we're you know we're spending even more money developing um, technologies like drones that will make um, you know They'll make it easier to go to war, and they'll make it easier to go into undeclared wars. Yeah, and they, they're they actually setting up, um, because I guess, um, you, you know, the, 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 the spending is good nowadays for defense contractors. Um, they've authorized 30,000 of drones um, to uh, fly over the U.S., um, and, and, and I, I, I mean, I didn't think that would be possible, but I guess, um, well, maybe some for weather or whatever, but, I mean, I guess, um, you know, why not put some weapons on them, too, you know? I mean, it's pretty scary, and here in central New York, we have a really active anti-drone movement because um, just outside of the city limits, there is um, an Air National Guard base where drones are piloted and maintained from Hancock, um, Hancock Air Base. And so um, we're working, we've discussed beginning uh, local resolution campaigns to get the city to reject any future purchases of drones for surveillance although they are very popular here among law enforcement and among the governing elites. But it's a campaign we're considering. And uh, but just this morning I was part of, um, of a student-led action here at one of the local universities. We, were, uh, we, had a, we did a study in uh, at the local ROTC office and lounge, the, um, I can forget what RASI stands for, the cadet training that offers um, education financial incentives to, to students to enlist in the military. And it's, it's really sad that, you know, we talk about how we have this volunteer army, but really our, our army, brought, the government bribes people to join the army and with things like with jobs and health care and educational benefits, which are things that could be offered as human rights, as, as rights to all people. Um, we, part, as part of my campaign, we're talking to people about an economic bill of rights, that there are certain economic um, rights that if they're not met, you, we are not able to exercise our political freedoms. And so the idea that you know, we have the right to a job, we have the right to health care and education, and basically the government is providing this but just just the people that are willing to fight in our wars of aggression and perpetuate U.S. imperialism and exploitation, and so um, this is just just another thing that the corporate parties won't talk about because every year they're just waiting for the campaign contributions from their military sponsors, and in recent years, uh, my Democratic opponent was the benefactor of their of their donations. This year, they seem to be hedging their bets on the Republicans. But um, it's just another example of, you know, there is consensus in Washington, D.C. among the elites, and it's not a consensus that's going to benefit the American people. Well, uh yeah, it, there, it, it does pay to be fully informed, everybody. I, I mean, um, 
the, you, you know, the, there's a lot of things going on. I mean, we could go through issues. We could talk for hours about um, just, the, you know, there's so much corruption. There's so many bad incentives. There's uh, so much um, lack of, of, of vision um, and uh, the possibilities that could be and, and, and win-win situations and things like that. Um, and just being thoughtful and uh, and et cetera. Um, but what, what do you think um, it's like, uh, you know, in politics, the last couple of, uh, de well, the last decade at least, the, the powers have been going back and forth, like we're sick of Republicans, we're sick of Democrats, and, um, and eventually people are just going to say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm out of here, I'm just going to choose um, someone else. Now, you're the only alternate between um, this cartel that we have, um, which is when uh, two organizations or interests um, uh, black out all competitions, kind of like a monopoly, but it's more of a duopoly as a cartel. And um, and uh, so, but people can just um, choose something different. Uh, I mean, eventually that's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And right now they have a 10% approval rating. They have a, uh, uh, there, there's um, record numbers of independents. Um, register to vote uh, even more than there are of either of the two main parties. What do you think it uh, takes to, um, uh, you know, get to, to propel you to Washington um, and, uh, and maybe lots of others all across the country? I mean, even if you're not in the 24th district of New York, um, maybe you don't have someone in your own district uh, that you can support. Um, it, it's like I am fans of other Congress people that aren't in my district, um, and, and they still influence laws that affect me. Uh, this is a national campaign. Um, I mean, people are occupying uh, Wall Street, and, and uh, they're having tea parties. But, I mean, that's that sends a message that puts heat on the politicians. But the final result of that has to be you know, quote unquote, occupying the house. Uh, what do you think, um, you, you know, are some motivating factors for people to get out and, um, and, and really rock the votes? I mean, really rock it, yeah. Well, I think the first factor is having someone that you can actually vote for on the ballot. So that's why Greens have worked really hard to get our candidates on the ballot. And fighting the, you know, the media blackout of independent candidates we, we've, at least in my race, we've been really successful in getting me in the media. And so I think, you know, just that's one step to actually having people know about you as a candidate. And then, of course, getting information out there that, about how similar the major party candidates are. And it's really unfortunate that people are still voting based on their fears. I hear every day from people, oh, Ursula. I really like your positions on things, but you know you don't have you don't really have a shot. So I'm going to vote for the Democrat. And we, when I ask them, you know, which policy of his do you support? You know, I get the silence, you know, blank stare because he's you know basically because he's not a scary Tea Partier. So um, I think, but I think more and more people are figuring out how how similar the two major parties are. So I think a lot of it is just getting information out there. Um, I think a big problem we have is people, um, I think, you know, young people or people like in the inner cities that are generally, you know, not rich and not part of the political establishment um, feel alienated. So getting out there and talking specifically about issues that matter to them um, yeah, getting that populace that doesn't normally even show up for elections yeah. and giving them a real choice and, 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 you know, because, I mean, this is directly, I mean, this there's probably nothing more, well, I won't say that, but th this majorly impacts everyone's lives. I mean, just, there's nothing less, I'll say that. I'm, yeah. There's some things that might be tied with it, but... Um, uh, and, and then yeah. also just talking to people in a language that they understand, and I think that's where um, the appeal is at least I think of my campaign to people. Um, I don't know if, if listeners or you've ever had this experience where, you know, you're trying to get informed as a voter, but you might not be totally, you know, up to date on the buzzwords and what it all means. And sometimes parties, candidates from the major parties can sound really similar and you kind of might say, oh, that sounds good, what he's saying. But then like the opponent saying something that also sounds good because they've, they've mastered the art of, you know, rhetoric. But then, you know, and I think that 
when you talk to regular people on the streets, you got to just you got to talk to people and straight straightforward about issues that matter to them. So you know, here in, in Central New York, I live in Syracuse, which is a really typical city. And when I when I go into you know when I'm I live in the city, so I guess when I'm out talking to young people um, about issues, and and I ask them what matters to them, you know. A lot of people here, um, there's high unemployment and incarceration rates among people of color are extremely high. Where the so, United States has the highest incarceration rate out of any country, even yeah. Iran. And, right. Yeah. And so, you know, when I tell them we need to legalize marijuana because too many young people are going to prison for non-criminal activities, you know, they, they're, they nod their heads and they're like, yeah, we've never heard a politician say that before. Yeah, it's the, the worst part is it's hypocritical. Now we have presidents and stuff admitting that they've done drugs, yet um, they're preventing, poss they're putting an atmosphere out there where kids nowadays might not have the same opportunities that they themselves have achieved. And, uh, and that's, um, you, you know, odd. So, um, there, well, well uh, be, now, real quick, um, actually, uh, we usually ask, um, also, I actually, I had another thought. I'll come back to it. Um, but uh, what's some of your favorites, um, you, you know, people um, that, you, you know, might have inspired you or people that, that might not have but that you found interesting in history or, or that could be living now and, and, and why? Well, for me, um, I think the most inspiring people that I know are lifelong peace activists that I've met through... Um, just different, well, I guess peace activism. So people like Kathy Kelly, for example, who will go where no one goes. Well, she'll go to Iraq or Afghanistan or Pakistan where the U.S. is dropping bombs with, and take, you know, take people from the U.S. to meet with people in the Middle East that are affected by, um, by our policies. So I find people like that that are selfless and courageous to be very inspiring um, you know, people, well, my, my, my campaign manager, for example, Howie Hawkins, who founded the Green Party, also lifelong committed activist, and says things that, and does things that are not popular in the mainstream, but just, you know, sticking to it and showing that lifelong commitment to, to justice. That's why things aren't as bad as they could be. I mean, um, with those people there, things could be a lot worse. Um, and uh, but I mean, it, it, it. But with those people there, I mean, we don't have to, um, re, you know, just completely start from scratch. I mean, the infrastructure's there. We just need, uh, you know, some people to to kind of bring it back to life. Um, and and I said, I was gonna say, I I was thinking the other day, I have a dream as well as um, I know. Um, that's a popular saying, but my dream here is to have 50 plus people elected to the House of Representatives who are not Republicans or Democrats who agree on just, you know, like five issues um, and, and, and the rest, you know what, I'm not even going to worry about it. The, the, the uh, overseas war spending, the wars, the civil liberties, um, like the Patriot Act and, and, and this homeland security apparatus that we have, the TSA and everything like that. Um, and uh, uh, right to a fair trial and et cetera. Um, the, the, the endless drug war, that's, um, it's, it, it's an enforceable uh, law, uh, just like uh, prostitution. You might not agree with it, I don't agree with it, but it's, uh, it's one of those unenforceable laws. And, um, and as we just mentioned, and to uh, uphold their uh, oath and call out people who don't um, uphold their oath. And, and that's, I think we need a little bit of that. I mean, with a little bit of that, things can turn around rather quickly. Um, and, uh, and there's candidates just like you yeah, every, everywhere. Go to um, gpgreenparty.org, just gp.org. Libertarian Party says lp.org. You'll find hundreds of candidates, hundreds of them out there um, that are just waiting for your votes. And, um, and the FCC has a site of a bunch of links. Um, Ursula, um, it's uh, been really great talking with you. But let me ask you, um, is there anything that I haven't mentioned here, um, anything that, uh, uh, you, you know, what's on your radar? Um, what, what's, uh, you, you know, some things that, um, you know, I might have forgotten to say that you would like to say here in closing? Well, I, I, would, I just would want to repeat what we started with, that when, um, when, we, when I hear, at least when I hear my two opponents, you know, I don't hear them giving us any real solutions 
to problems that are afflicting us, whether it's the jobs crisis, the climate crisis, the never-ending U.S. wars. and Or even any wars. honest conversation about it, you know? Sure. It's like they don't live in the same, they don't, like, they don't, they don't talk, they don't look at factual reality. And so I think that that's what independent candidates bring is, um, well, independents were not tied to any corporations or special interest groups. Our only special interest group is the people, the public. You know, we work in the public interest, independent candidates like me and other Greens, and that we need to be voting for people that have real solutions. And also, you know, I think listeners, it's, it's nice to, you know, say we support people or we're going to vote for independent candidates, but if there are people in your area that are running as third-party alternative candidates, in addition to, you know, support, financial support, likes on Facebook, we do really need people that are willing to put in the time and the sweat equity to help get our message out there and help to actually get the votes on Election Day. So I'd say, you know, if you believe in what me or other candidates are saying, you know, look at your schedule and think about when can you actually get out in the streets and support us, whether it's me, whether it's Jill Stein, whether it's Gary Johnson. But actually, you know, hit the pavement and make sure that your neighbors and people you know are aware that they have actual choices on Election Day. Yeah, and when, when, um, sometimes people are just waiting for other people to stand up. I mean, that's been scientifically proven. And um, But, um, you know, that's something to learn from and, and, and move beyond. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, make it a November to remember. Um, just. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, and visit my website. I forgot to say oh, that. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Ursula for Congress dot com, and we have lots of information up there about how to donate. We've got some videos, press releases, and yeah, if you see something you like, share it and learn from it. Yeah, U R S um, U L A F O R Congress dot com, and. Um, I do appreciate uh, your time. I'll say goodbye to you real quick um, after the interview, and uh, thank you very much, and um, I hope you have a great day. Bye. Thanks.